Peace and blessings everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Albert and in this episode I have the Alfa Romeo Giulietta and as the Italian would say, questa è un auto molto bella. And of course, it's bella, just look at it. I have to tell you right from the beginning that this is my favorite compact car. Not because it's reliable, not because it's fast, but because it looks so good. The Alfa Romeo always had a special place in my heart because they do create beautiful cars but well as an opinion of the general population they are not reliable and I don't know what to say about that because uh, on one shoulder I have the devil and on one shoulder I have the angel the devil is saying get it get it get it get it look at it it's beautiful it's nice you're gonna stand out it's a beautiful car and it is but on this shoulder I have the angel who is saying well you're gonna have electrical problems you're gonna have some engine problems you're gonna have well a lot of little different issues with the car and you're gonna feel sorry but in life you don't have to take always the best decisions sometimes the bad decisions can have a happy ending well just like this one here so today we're gonna drive the Alfa Romeo Giulietta I'm gonna share with you the experience and maybe who knows I can encourage you to buy one so I got this car from my friends at CarZet CarZet are a specialized second-hand car dealership located in Ipswich all the cars come with six months REC warranty which is extendable up to three years if you have a low credit score they can help you with finance if you want your car to be part exchanged well CarZet can provide part exchange with your car also if you want your car delivered all the way across UK well they can provide that as well so check them out at carz.co that UK. The first Alfa Romeo Giulietta went into production in 1954 and it had multiple shapes. It was a sedan, it was a coupe, a spider and an estate. Now it was replaced in 1965 by the Alfa Romeo Giulia. As a revenge in 1977 the Giulietta came back to replace the Giulia all the way up Till 1985 and this is the third generation that went into production in 2010 and well ended production in 2020 and I do have to tell you that I feel sorry that they don't make these cars anymore because I'm quite curious what they would have created for uh, 2024 2025 but nevertheless this car that I have here today it's something that I wanted to drive for a long time and after I drove it for a while I have to tell you that it's giving you a very special and unique sensation so let's talk about the general aspect of the car the front end of the Alfa Romeo exudes a sporty and distinctive design its prominent feature is the iconic shield shaped grille with the chrome surround and these horizontal slacks conveying a commanding presence on the road flanking the grille are these headlights they are sleek and angular and incorporate halogen or xenon bulbs and well of course these led daytime running lights the front bumper integrates a large air intake to improve airflow and giving the car a more aerodynamic look in the front bumper we also have these fog lights which they are kind of pointy towards the outside and well they look like some weird bug eyes but I have to tell you that I like them so overall the front end of the car is just like a beautiful painting to be honest with you I like to stare at it and to admire these beautiful lines it's time to talk about the engine on the Giulietta 
This car has a 1.6 GTD engine, which means that this car is a diesel. And well, the engine provides 320 Newton meters, 120 horsepower, and well, goes from 0 to 60 in around 10 seconds. But what is impressive about it, it's the fuel consumption. This car manages to do around 60 miles per gallon. And yes, this one has a manual gearbox with six speeds that it actually helps with the fuel consumption as well. And I do have to tell you that this car feels quite nippy on the road. The side profile of the Giulietta showcases a sleek and dynamic design, reflecting its sporty nature. It features clean lines and a well-proportioned silhouette that exudes a sense of sophistication. The gently slopy roofline adds to the car aerodynamic appeal while maintaining a stylish and elegant look on the street. The windows are framed with these chrome accents and, well, they enhance the overall premium feel. The side mirrors are streamlined and have this beautiful aluminium finish as well as the door handles. The Giulietta has 17-inch stylish alloy wheels which further enhances its sporty stance. Overall, the side view of the Giulietta displays a harmonious balance between sportiness and elegance. The rear end of the Giulietta is designed with a blend of sportiness and elegance. It features a sleek and tapered design that complements the car's overall dynamic profile. At the center, there is a subtle and refined trunk lid that integrates with the body lines smoothly. The rear tail lights are elongated and wrap around the sides of the car, emphasizing the width of the car. They are LED technology, providing a modern touch and enhanced visibility. The rear bumper is sculpted and looks sporty as well. It has the parking sensors integrated here and the exhaust pipe right over there. All right, here we have a subtle roof spoiler, which isn't big, isn't small, it's just here. Well, if you don't look closely, you might not even notice it, but nevertheless, it's here. One thing that I like is the fact that you can open the trunk from the badge. You just press the badge and the trunk opens. Pretty neat, ain't it? Overall, the rear end of the car is beautifully designed, stylish and elegant. And well, as well, you guessed it already, <laughs> I like everything about this car. So uh, why don't you guys tell me what is your honest opinion regarding the Alfa Romeo Giulietta? Now it's time to talk about the interior of the Giulietta and the Italians always created beautiful clothes and beautiful cars and well the interior doesn't disappoint. I have to tell you that the materials are very nice and the design of the car well it's not like others and when I mean like others you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have different buttons on the dashboard, the climate controls are very big and somehow gives the car a very aggressive stance on the inside as well. Down here we do have the climate vents which you can see this car has aircon, dual climate controls and you can adjust the temperature from here and from here you can adjust where the air is blown, from here you can adjust the speed of the air vents and well that's pretty much it. I do like this aluminium buttons on the dials because well it feels very sporty and elegant at the same time. You have these sporty seats with uh, this red stitching and this nice material on the middle of the seat and yes these are sport seats and they are very very comfortable. One thing that I like is the gear shifter. It has this aluminium trim over here and it feels very sporty and it's very pleasant to touch. Another feature that I like it's the way you change the driving modes of the car. You have the normal mode, you have the all-weather mode and well you have a dynamic mode and I have to tell you that once you press the dynamic mode the car transforms it becomes very aggressive even though it has 120 horsepower I can tell you that it's quite quite aggressive the throttle response gets better on the dynamic mode and even the steering wheel changes it's more precise now we have a black roof line to emphasize the sportiness of the car the materials are very nice you have leather on the door sides as well leather on the gear shifter leather on the parking brake and the overall materials are quite nice now this car doesn't have a multimedia system it only has a radio 
and well to be honest with you it has a cd we do have this small screen here that well looks very very dated but well it is what it is this car doesn't have a screen an infotainment screen and well it doesn't have bluetooth media as well the sound system isn't bad but uh well it's missing a lot of uh, modern features and well yes i feel sorry for that but i do like these air vents over here they are very very well integrated into the dashboard and these buttons over here these are the lock and unlock buttons this is the well the start stop button that this car has now this is the front fog light and this is the rear fog light as well so in the center of the dashboard you can see that there's nothing really uh, interesting except for these buttons over here i haven't seen for a while a cd in a car but well uh, I get the nostalgia of uh, the older times. The gauge cluster looks very dated, but it's sporty at the same time because it has those aluminum trims surrounding the gauges. As I'm moving the driving mode selection, you can see that it changes into the gauge cluster, which is neat and interesting. But other than that, in the gauge cluster, really there's nothing that much interesting except one little thing well the average fuel consumption for this car was 49.7 but there's something interesting when i turn off the car it's a little julieta going bye bye and when i start the car again the gauges do this little dance and well it shows you that <laughs> my doors are wide open so overall the gauge cluster looks nice simple elegant and sporty at the same time but it's not modern as other cars have it but to be honest with you i kind of like it the alpha giulietta can carry five adults with no stress whatsoever it's very spacious you have plenty of headroom you have plenty of leg room now i like the aluminium pedals that emphasizes the sportiness of the car as well as the, the alpha romeo badge that is right here on the door side everything about this car feels very very special it's not like others you have to understand that feels very very different it's not noisy inside the materials used are high quality and the car isolation is quite quite good the steering wheel looks a little bit odd it has an odd shape but it has this red stitching over here and it's sporty enough it has these bolstered sides over here that emphasizes again the sportiness of this car the dashboard layout is very elegant and somehow it has some plastic on it that looks like sway i don't know how this is possible it's the first time you know, when i see this in a car so it looks quite good we have this brushed aluminium trim over here that emphasizes the sportiness of the car we have the black piano well fake piano black plastic over here that uh, emphasizes the luxuriousness of the car so yes this car feels expensive you do have two cup holders over here which they in my opinion they are a little bit too small right here we do have some storage compartment but it's quite small in the armrest you do have some storage compartment but a it's very small uh, as well so yeah the the overall feeling inside this car is quite quite pleasant let's discuss about the rear seats i have to tell you that the rear seats are quite comfortable to sit in the leather is soft and elegant and even here this material is very nice to touch as well now you have plenty of leg room you have plenty of headroom well not not that much headroom to be honest with you you can see that my hair touches the rooftop due to the fact that the roof lines of the car are slicked and uh, slopey towards the rear end but well it is what it is but you do have decent amount of leg room because uh, i have the seated adjusters as i said i'm 5.11 and you may see that i have decent amount of leg room now if i want to have more head room and if i lean myself towards the front of the car <laughs> the leg room slightly disappears but well it's not as big as the golf and uh, the set or the ford but well i don't mind that in the rear seat we do have this air vent over here we just have one air vent and it's a round this is the only round air vent that this car has i don't know why it's round uh, but reminds me if, uh, reminds me of the older models that used to have this <laughs> round air vent in the front of the car 
but from the rear seats you can look at the dashboard and it's quite quite a pleasant feeling overall the rear seats are comfortable and well it's not a bad place to be ah yeah one thing you don't have an armrest and you don't have any cup holders as well in the door side you do have some small uh, compartment to put some things but other than that you are missing some important features over here as well so too bad you don't have cup holders and yes too bad you don't have an armrest now it's time to drive the Alfa Romeo Giulietta we're gonna put the seat belt on because the seat belt it's very important for your safety and for your life so do wear them all the time don't forget to put your seat belt on so listen to how that putty cat purrs Brrr. yeah i'm gonna switch off the aircon now for a bit so let's drive the car and let's have some fun with it because i'm sure that we're gonna have some fun with this car because it's quite quite sporty now i have to adjust my seat a little bit more these seats are manually adjustable so they are not electrically adjustable which is a little bit annoying but well it is what it is but the car goes very well even though it has 120 horsepower i can actually tell you that it's quite 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 good it feels nimble even around the corners it's very very grippy it has a lot of grip and um, it doesn't understeer it doesn't have too much body roll it's quite there it's very sporty and very responsive uh, i imagine with the two liter diesel engine this one is gonna be quite a little monster on the road now regarding the comfort i have to tell you that the suspension is a little bit harsh just just a little bit harsh i would have preferred a uh, much more softer suspension but if you have a softer suspension the car wouldn't feel so sporty on the road so yes but regarding the overall look of the car and regarding the maintenance and well regarding the practicality i have to tell you that is a very good option to get it's very practical you have room for five adults the fuel consumption it's ridiculously low you get around 60 miles per gallon which sounds really nice and sounds too good to be true but actually it is now this car has you may seen uh, previously uh, it has an average of 49 point something uh, 0.7 and it's been driven mostly around the town so you can see that on the highway you can get an easily 60 mpgs now <laughs> regarding the elephant in the room regarding how reliable it is well to be honest with you um, i've read on some forums and there are people complaining about a little things some electrical issues some turbo issues and uh, well some uh, uh, coolant leakage but other than that i didn't really find too much on and well i know that they are italian and they are not that reliable but well i think they are reliable like any other car <laughs> uh, no they are not but well you have to understand that when you buy an alfa romeo you buy it for the brand and when you buy this specifically uh giulietta i do hate this start stop button uh, yeah when you buy this giulietta you buy it for the looks you buy it for the practicality and uh, well mostly for the looks because the interior is very good looking the exterior is very sexy as well so you don't buy it for the reliability if you want reliability then go with the germans but i can tell you that you you won't have so much fun as you can have in this one and the car is very eye-catching i've been driving this car for a while and uh, i've seen a lot of people looking at it so it's a quite quite nice feeling so yes overall if you want a very good looking compact car uh, i do have a motorcycle yeah oh well you see what i said electrical issues come on go up all the way up but 
yeah so um yeah overall if you want a car that you can have a lot of fun with and uh, it, you get some uh, attention from the other people then gladly buy an Alfa Romeo Giulietta so yes I like it yes I recommend one just for the fun of it and well what's life without whimsy so I think this car will put a smile on your face so that was it for today guys thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for subscribing to my youtube channel there are a lot more cars coming and uh, well I thank you for the time that you actually put into watching my videos I try to create good quality content and uh, well I shall see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Peace and blessings to all of you. And, well, I'll see you soon.